Okay, once again, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel here, I highly suggest that you click the subscribe button and you subscribe to my channel to keep updated on new features, new techniques, different things we'll be doing throughout the course of how to build websites with Dreamweaver the fast, simple, easy way. Okay, plus, plus, uh, I need feedback from you guys. So send me feedback. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Frustrating things, things that you're trying to do that you can't do. I will help you as best I can. Okay, so let's move forward. So file, save as. Let's call this version 5. Okay, so every time you save a file here, it puts the, the previous file up here. So these are the step-by-step -step processes that we made to get to the current step. That's why I'm taking this one step at a time for you guys. All right, so let's build and design the rest of our site here. Okay, now, before we move forward with the rest of our div tags, let's talk about how I can stylize our H1 and our H2 tags, which we don't have a style for, by the way. So these are my default H1 tag and my default H2 tags. Okay, so let's change that. Let's make our H1 tag slightly smaller and let's make our H2 tag slightly smaller. So how can we do that? Okay, we put our cursor inside the tag. The tag is listed down here in the bottom left. Very simple technique here, guys. Again, if you listen to my technique, this is so simple. My objective is to make this so simple. It's frightening. It's child's play. Forget the books, forget the blogs, forget all the other confusing videos that have you writing code. I want to make this so simple. And I expect feedback. I expect comments. I want to hear from you because I'm sure most of you have been totally frustrated by these other insane, crazy, cuckoo, code-oriented videos that drive you insane. So if you can put up with my voice, the biggest problem about my videos is dealing with my voice problems. But there's nothing I can do about that. Short of taking Botox the vocal cords, which I don't want to do. Okay. So select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. So at 2 o'clock in the morning when you're trying to sleep, I want you to hear my voice saying, select the tag, make a rule, select the tag, make a rule. So select the tag, bottom left-hand corner, and come over here and make a rule. Okay. So again, less specific. We just want to create a rule for H1 when H1 is inside a branding tag. But before we do this, let's just set an H1 tag for the entire site. So how can I do that? I can just make this less specific. So we're going to make an H1 tag for the entire site. So we're going to say, now we can deal with pixels or we can deal with percentages. So as an example, if you were to type in 100%, I'm going to get something like this happening, which is way too small. So we're going to make this by default 210% which is give us this, which is about where we started, okay? So let's make this 180%. Okay, now here's the advantage of dealing with percentages. If you know that that's 180% and you want to make the H2 tag smaller, you guessed it, for those that didn't sleep through fourth grade math class, you can make it 170, 150, 140. You didn't have to remember that was because we started at 180%. Now let's do a couple different things here. I want to make my H1 tag 180%. Actually, that's fine in this particular case. But let's make my H1 tag by default capitalized. We're going to pick capitalized uppercase. So watch what happens to my H1 tag. This is now capitalized. MySite.com. We're screaming at you. MySite.com. We're going to change it in just a bit. I just want to share with you a concept. So the H1 tag solo by itself is the H1 tag for the entire site. I'm going to hit OK. Now, the H1 tags, they have the, I'm sorry, the HTML tags should appear on top. These are ID tags. ID tags go on the bottom, starting with the wrapper tag. Okay, so let's make a rule. Let's make a rule for H2, H3, H4, and H5. How can I make a rule for many tags at the same time? I can separate them with a comma. So watch this. I can make a rule for the H2 tag. I'm going to select the tag. Select the tag. Make a rule. Less specific. So we're going to say H2, comma, H3, comma, H4, comma, H5. We're not going to do H6. 
So, rule definition for H2, comma, H3, H4, H5. Now, since these represent different sizes, I probably would not want to change the size because these represent different sizes. But I'm going to change because I can. I'm going to make the font family different. Now, extremely important step here, guys. I'm not making it the same. The same would be doing this. This is what we defaulted to with our body tag. So don't create redundancies for yourself. Okay? We're going to make this different. We're going to make this courier, and we're going to make this bold er as opposed to bold. So as an example, if I have H2, H3, H4 for the site, it's going to follow those rules. So that's the rule structure for, for H2, H3, H4, H5. Okay. Now if I want to, I'm going to make this by default, I'm going to make this black. So that now turns to black because I overrode the default setting, which was white because the branding tag was set to white. Okay, so I hit OK, make a change, save a change. Okay, now, very important step. I decided to create a rule structure specifically for the branding tag, more specifically for the H1 tag, and the H1 tag is inside of branding. So how can I do this? Well, I select the tag. I select the tag and I make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule, make a rule for the selected tag. So in this particular case, guys, we do want to be this specific. We do want to say H1 tag inside of branding. So an H1 tag. Now, here's a very, very powerful understanding and concept of how CSS works. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. Cascading like a river, it cascades down. It has a parent-child relationship. So what's the parent to the H1 tag? H1 tag's parent inside of branding is the original H1 tag, which we default to uppercase. So important step here on how the whole thing works. There's a parent-child relationship, which means anything that's blank, don't confuse blank with Nothing. Blank is default. Anything in here that you see is blank, it defaults to the parent tag. So in this particular case, I like the font family, so I'm not going to change this. I like the size, so I'm not going to change this. But I don't like the case. I don't like the case here. I'm going to change this to initial caps, which is capital. So if I the apply option, I get to be, so it's a parent-child relationship. If your parents don't decide, you get to decide. But if you don't make a decision, your parents decide for you. So our parents decided the H1 tag, which is our parent tag, decided to set the font family and decided to set the, uh, whatever else we set in here would be default. But in this particular case, we decided to make this capitalized. As an example, we're not gonna do this, but if I wanted to make this blue, I surely could. I'm going to make that blue. Okay, I'm going to keep it to white. Okay, so by default, don't confuse nothing with a value. Nothing is default. Nothing defaults to the parent tag. In this particular case, the parent tag, the H1 instead of branding, is H1 solo by itself over here. Okay, now what we can do is this: is I decided the H1 tag. I'm going to go to the category of block. And I'm just, because it's my logo type here, I'm gonna put just a little bit more spacing, letter spacing between the letters. This defaults to what's called M space, E-M. And M, E-M, is equal to the height of a letter M, of a capital M more specifically. So we need to be very careful on how much M space and we give this. As an example, if I type in one M space, I'm gonna get something like this. That's way too much space between my letters. So we're going to break this down to say 0.15 M spaces, which gives us something like this. And that I can live with. That's fine with me. Okay, so I'm going to make a change, save a change. So I just want to give a little example of how I can talk specifically to a tag inside a ID tag. In this particular case, I can talk to the H2 tag 
specifically just for branding. So let's do that. I'm going to select the H2 tag, select the tag, and make a rule. I'm going to make a rule specifically for H2, and H2 is inside of branding. And OK. So the only thing I want to change here is its color. OK. So I'm going to share with you a very cool technique here. I want to make this type color the opposite of this orange color. Well, how do I know the opposite of orange? How do I know this? Well, very simply, you don't have to know it. We're going to take this swatch here. We're going to sample this color. So by default, it becomes the same color. Obviously, I can't see it because it's the same color. However, if I click right here and go over to my wheel, now, important step here, I'm working on Macintosh. Macintosh color palette is slightly different than Windows color palette. So you just have to get to know your Windows color palette system. This is Macintosh's color system. That's why Macintosh is better for design, print design, web design. Macintosh is actually better. Okay, so if this is where the color lives, then over here to the far left is the color opposite. So if we were to hit OK, and I hit the apply option, that's the opposite color. Okay, how cool is that? Now, we want to make this a darker version of the opposite color. So I can just go back to my color wheel and drag this down. So now it's in the opposite version, darker version of the opposite color. Make a change, save a change. So we're going to continue building the rest of the div tag. I promise, guys, we'll finish the rest of the div tag in the very next video. We'll format the site nav, the main content, the news bar. We're going to use something called floats. We're going to float things to the left, float things to the right. We're going to put images in there. We're going to make the site look nice. So stay tuned.